You've come back to a country where you have nothing. You've lost. Oh, just kidding, just kidding. The King of Boys was a movie that would go down in history as a good body of work. Everyone watched it from kids to women. Some guys saw the name and said, damn, feminists are back again, man. But after the series came out on Netflix, there were teasers to build the hype for the viewers. The most popular one was where we followed the worst cameraman in history. Like, damn, man, focus on something, anything. But the teaser left me with a lot of questions. Like, like, how on earth are the police officers standing where guests should stand? You are the police. Why are you standing there? But then, the most anticipated series came out with a lot of mixed reviews. Some like it, some dislike it. So I will go through all the episodes for you. Yep, this will be a very long video. <laughs> Get yourself the popcorn and enjoy. Episode 1 titled The King's Welcome, it starts sad with Eniola feeling the guilt of her past ways and how she made them clap <laughs> her children. By clap, I mean shoot. And the next time we see her was on the news with a new presenter and also a new cameraman, obviously. I actually heard they fired the other guy and I think this was the reason. But the press was here only because Eniola came back and she came back with style. She had 50 buffed guys and, and it's a lie. Did you guys see that? They hired the same camera guy. Is this camera cost? Eniola after five years came back to Nigeria and decided to shock the world when she announced on the news that she would be campaigning to become the governor of Lagos because Nigeria is a joke. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Your mind isn't here. Focus, man. Focus. Protect her. After scaring the hell out of this presenter, she went to her house and since all her assets were seized, she was lodged in a guest house and then proceeds to hail a somewhat loyal right hand. A day tiger. It looked like she wanted to kiss him there. <laughs> then Agnes came from nowhere to spoil the show. A day tiger. And you for a fact is going through a lot mentally because for years, her alter ego keeps tormenting her and it became so evident in this limited series. But but to combat this issue with her mental health, she goes back to slavery and flogs herself. Well, she only just needs cotton and 50 shades. That's not even the movie. <laughs> 50 shades of grey. What's not the movie? It's the slave movie. You know what I'm talking about. After everything, her campaign kicks off. You might be wondering if she would do anything innovative or add any new skill to the campaign game that we've never seen before. So she did something new <laughs> by doing nothing new. <laughs> How can you sleep with good conscience in your mansion and towers? The election is coming. You now remember your name. Say no! If I no laugh, I go cry. So it's better I laugh, even if I have to force it. On the other end of the show, we have Dapo, aka D Man. He works for a newspaper that I would never read in my life called Conscience Newspaper. <laughs> really? That's why your business is crashing. <laughs> what the hell is that, Dave? But the newspaper company is going downhill. They've not paid a lot of their employees for months. So, with this, he wants to run a report on your lab because he feels something shady is happening there. Dapo is also a father, but not a deadbeat one because he cares about his kid. The question is, which kid does he care for the most? The newspaper or you let me be honest <laughs> you're not winning this <laughs> he gets a lead that told him to call the head of the nccc and when he did that and mentioned in your last name the guy caught the call faster than my ex that's why she's single now <laughs> Odogu is still someone I really appreciated. He's a family man that lives in the club 24-7, really shows or depicts the average evil man. <laughs> he did something so funny in this episode that most people did not notice. He hit this man with money and did not drop it on him. <laughs> Damn, man. What a thug. If I no laugh, I go cry. I also really loved when his sons played ball and we all witnessed the most defenseless goal ever scored on TV. Oh. 
the episode ended with this dramatic shot of this man walking into this office and i will spoil the show small for you but i know you already know this this part had nothing to do with anything like the, the Nothing. <laughs> episode 2 titled A Wounded Lion is Still a Lion, named after my private part. In this episode, Odogu was telling the girls what he would do to them, calling his wee wee a stick shift, and they all liked it. Do you girls like those jokes? <laughs> I have plenty. Just sit down, relax. <laughs> but he also got a package in the form of a snake. We get introduced to this reverend, no, I would rather call him an influencer because all he cares about is his numbers and he is not shy. And because of his congregation, he is needed by governmental aspirants. See why I called him a Tinder influencer? Anela in this episode goes to meet the MySpace influencer and at first he plays hard to get and when he saw the envelope, he changed his mind. And when she told him that it was for him to endorse her, you can see how his face changed. This guy is like having bipolar issues. So after he refused, there was like this weird scene where Enola went to his church to fake her membership. It looked a little bit cultish. I don't know. I'm just saying. On the other side of the world, we have a governor that wants to be re-elected and his wife Jumoke. It is so evident that she wants that position more than her husband. She is so desperate for power that she went to the market to interrupt Enola's press run. Also, a new player was introduced in the underworld and they weirdly did not give him any backstory at all, so I was confused. Also, I rather drink dust than pronounce his name. I love that he is so eccentric with his dressing, but I dislike that he is so fixated on people begging him. Most people fiend for weed, cocaine, some sex. But this guy, he likes being begged. Dapo and his boss had this long scene where he was drooling over the story he had on Eniola and all all my man wanted to do was just play chess. <laughs> Dapo thinks the president is involved with Eniola because how on earth will he win the election when he was losing? And also, he helped Eniola come back without any issue. To be honest, I want to bring D-Man outside and tell him to smell the air. This is Nigeria, guy. <laughs> That's how it works here. We are all used to it. I ask you again, do you still want to open this box? Very sure, sir. The only question is, I... I knew it. <laughs> this guy's not a Nigerian. <laughs> no Nigerian will risk their life for anything. For journalism? I read Masco. I wouldn't even go to a football game. Dapot then received another package. <laughs> but remember this man? <laughs> his name is Akman. He will be clapped soon. Thanks to this package, he was able to run a story on Eniola. And it's blue. He gained a lot of followers. And is that not why we do anything we do? For followers? For subscribers? Huh? <laughs> Episode 3 titled An Old Enemy Named After My Wife This by far is the weirdest and shortest episode. It starts with Eniola speaking to the Twitter influencer trying to get him to support her again but this time she opened up a little I've had to take care of myself all by myself <laughs> All this way <laughs> She went to her campaign manager's office and realized that these guys are emptying her pockets and they are doing nothing. And feminism happened here. We would also leak to the press that um, Madame Salami is um, engaged to be married. <laughs> Something bad as that happened was when Enola dressed up as a sultan and met the president just to guilt trip him into making her his party's candidate. And it worked. You see, all you need in life is to have enough debt on anyone so you can get them to do anything for you. How do you think I got my current girlfriend? You think she loves me? <laughs> I have like tons of pictures of her. <laughs> I'm joking, please. 
<laughs> okay. And the last thing that happened in the episode was this grinder, this belly dancer, was sent to kidnap Odugu's men, and Makanaki was finally introduced. Oh, I'm scared of you. <laughs> These guys are dead. Ad break. Why are you gay? Before I go any further, guys, I am sure by now that if you are still here, you are going to watch to the very end. You are gay. So, let me talk to you on why you should subscribe. I will be giving away five Benzies soon. <laughs> and I want you to stop walking to the office. So, if you subscribe, turn on post notification and follow me on Instagram and share this video. Yes, there's a lot of ants. I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> I will send you a JPEG of a Benz. Yes, I said it. Only five people. So put your Instagram account, so I'll send it to you. <laughs> Back to the video. Episode 4 titled The Devil's Revenge, named after what I did to my wife's family. In this episode, we follow the dumbest poor kids ever recorded by man. So these boys went looking for their dog in the night. First red flag that these kids should be jailed on time. They searched for what seems like hours until they got to this warehouse and saw Makanaki play this game that girls are obviously needed for so you know it did not end well for these guys the game goes like this spin the bottle and the first three people it faces gets clapped don't worry they all got clapped it's called foreshadowing you've watched it already and because of this they got so scared that they shared important informations about odogu then after the last person died the kids were like oh you know what I think I should finally go home. I think I should head out now. And I was so happy they caught the kids. It's just sad they caught the wrong one. Then we see that Eniola finally wins. Before this, she has always been taking L and crying in graveyards up and down. She finally got the backing she needed from CMP, which also stands for Come. I won't finish that. And this was a pivotal moment of the show because she finally met Dapo in a weird way. He asked her a question on our villain, but it was so funny that he did it from afar. <laughs> and I was like, what? What did he say? Come on, guys. Tell me what did he say? Come closer, please. After a few back and forths, she hit him with the street line. Why do they call you the king of boys? Are you want to say yeah, yeah, me, Lord, yeah. she turned it around and he was sweating at the end like damn guy do you even have any plan at all so jumoke offered eniola 50k eniola was like come, come on man. man come on add 2k in episode 5 eniola was finally informed that makanaki is back and i was shocked that she was unfazed did you burn the body afterwards but because of this, she was able to call for a meeting, finally. Dapo at this point is probably in a heated relationship with who keeps giving him packages. As a guy, this guy has gotten more gifts than a lot of girls. You, you know, you're watching now, you know you've never gotten any gifts before. Don't even be angry. That boy is finer than you. He interviewed the head of NCCC, but did something very stupid here. The case involving Elijah Salami, before she ran away. Well, I hope. You and your sources know that it's illegal for non-authorized person to possess confidential documents like this. Snake, answer me! Snake! But as he was there getting more L's, because that's all he has been doing, Akpan! Akpan died from a letter bomb. Akpan, my guy. I'll miss him, bro. Akpan! Akpan, my man. <laughs> They also beat up his friend and messed his palo. Damn, man, more people are dying. R.I.P. Palo. You be missed. I think I only saw you once. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but knowing that, but this only added more fuel to his tank. Episode 6 titled Trouble Sleeps, named after my side chick. And you're not first asked for a meeting, but then refused to come because she can't be seen with those guys. She's in a race to become a gubernatorian. You know, you know the word, you know the word. So Samuel, which is his name, not that other name, he wants the throne and in return will make her win. And she agreed. The funniest thing that happened in this episode was a debate period. They first spoke well, just light jabs. Your son is ugly. No, no, your daughter is hungry. Light jabs, as I said. Then Jumoke Kongo in Chris mouth. So Eniola reminded her and the viewers that this is a show about BDSM and put her in her place by slut shaming not just her, but also her her mom and every time she said something bad about Jumoke, the Netflix logo kept fading into this. 
<laughs> but it did not end there because we then found out that Jumoke is actually Aduke. Do you hope? There was this shootout that happened in your lab because of Makanaki and I was so impressed at the graphics and everything until I saw this. You guys did not see it? <laughs> Let me play the game for you. You know what? I'll tell you. Please, who is in the sky? <laughs> who are you trying to shoot? <laughs> look down. Your enemies are down. So Eniola was supposed to die here because look at what she's up against. The numbers doesn't even match up. And then from nowhere, an explosion happened. And she survived. Thanks to plot armor. So after finding the man that planted the bomb, Adetaiga then pointed his gun at Eniola. And guys, remember this because he would do this a lot. By the end, it turned out that it was Boxer. And I have to say, this was weird. Boxer is such a good actor. And being a good actor might also be bad because till the very end, I thought he was framed. <laughs> I have finished all the episodes. And I know you have. And I still think he was framed. Like, I, I seriously don't understand. But Eniola finally left her good side go. The transition happened by letting herself kill Boxer. But by doing this, the king of boys was finally back. Feminism won, guys. Pack up. <laughs> We're not needed on earth anymore. Episode 7, which was going to be the final episode, the episode started with Odogu playing a board game by himself, and it instantly went dark when Makanaki joined him. I liked how they almost kissed here, but it indirectly showed how strong Odogu was, because even if he was scared in this situation, he still had power. Then, this strong scene had to end with a dumb move by these dunce. He got clapped for being a dunce. No! No, no! No, Ronaldo! I love that boy, man. I remember that goal he scored and I was like, oh my god, it was like yesterday. Tiger for the longest time has always given this aura that he was working with the enemy. So when we saw him giving out information, we all went like, I'm not surprised, man. I knew it. I don't know much, but I knew this one. And Yola then met the kick influencer, but this time it was different. She came for his endorsement, but in a dirty way. She gave him a file, and this time it wasn't money. He just had incriminating details from bribes to the fact that he has a girlfriend that has a child for him. This is standard for every Nigerian man. And as soon as the endorsement was publicized, Dapper then posted the article. And as that was happening, yes guys, I know a lot of things happened at this same time. They also paid Dapper's boss to invalidate his credibility by saying he works for Aduke. And if that's not all, <laughs> he said they are both lovers. Please, turn the kids away from the television set now. Oh, baby. Yes, because I'm going crazy for my guy. Aduke was then kicked out of her house very quick, with what I would say is the best terms I have ever seen in my life. Most ladies heard this scene and was like, I want that. I want a two bedroom in Aja. I want monthly money. I don't give a damn about my kids. And Yola finally, for the first time, came for the meeting. And as she was talking her own, forming king of boys, feminism, all her guys turned on her, even at a tiger. It was so sad to see someone she almost kissed. Her love interest would do this to her. But as her back was against the wall, she put the biggest turnaround move I have ever seen. She came back and her love interest saved her in a series of bullets. And then from nowhere, we find out that she worked with Makanaki from the onset. And to be honest, guys, I wasn't surprised. She ordained him after they killed Samo and they both ruled the underworld and the above world. <laughs> so that's how it ended. In my opinion, it was a good show. It was very good. I loved it. And I won't lie. It was nice. I felt she should have been smarter at first, but I feel it was written for this exact purpose. So at the end, she would rise. It was Loki a show about mental health and even though she won in the end she lost the battle of the mind if you think about it but my review would be bad if i don't talk about the issues of the show and i guess some people were waiting for this <laughs> plot holes to talk about the plot holes of king of boys would probably be a separate video and i'm not going to make it but i'll just talk about some that i believe should have been changed. This chick here would have been Agnes because I don't know who this chick is. I've not seen her for in my life. How did Makanaki become friends with Eniola? Because if they have always been friends, why did her men have to die? It made no sense. The quotes were so much, it was wonderful to read, but like these guys are the smartest people because there's a point they were dropping quotes back to back like they were Britain. It was mad. I think it was just too much. It was good, but it was just too much. I loved it. Don't change it. It was, it was just too much when you notice it. It's not even a plot hole. Why did Dodogo 
would die when Enola gave him the order to kill Makanaki and Odoku was in support of Enola even in the new season she just did not answer his calls multiple times so I don't seriously understand why they had to kill him I think this is the end of King of Boys but if there is a season 3 what I would like to see is Ronaldo <laughs> bring him back please loving you is too easy cause you're beautiful Thanks for watching guys. Um this video took a lot to make. It was nice making this. I truly enjoyed. If you guys want to support me, please support my Patreon. That is how you remove money from your pocket and put it in mine. The Patreon link is down in the description. Subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends. If you got to this point, I know most people will not get to this point, but if you got to this point, um tell me what's the name of your favorite cartoon in a separate comment. Let's leave the comment section bubbling. Yes, and drop your opinion on the movie then drop your favorite um what they call a cartoon there's more ways to comment and show your friends it helps out a lot thank you guys for watching i don't know when i'll be making another video but i'll probably be making for blood and water and just some minor videos i like so yeah watch my previous video i just realized watch my previous video on king of boys i would put it in the end so you would watch it literally if you can get the background it has like this like i don't know crickets and in my video I made it in our other house when we were in the other house and it had crickets at the beginning. Weird. Freaking weird. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate you guys. Bye. Loving you is too easy cause you made me crazy. Loving you is dead to me like say never bring me. If I fetch you babe make you no verse you. I no go like make you upset you. I know you bad like a cardio. Get your body bad with no cardio, oh baby.